Hello, my name is V Sin, and this is a snapshot of Earth Defense Force 2017 Portable. Now, this came out on January 8th, 2013 for the PlayStation Vita. Um, it came out much earlier for, I believe it's the Xbox 360? Something like that. Anyways, this is a port of a console game. And, <laughs> what is it exactly? In short, shoot bugs. Lots and lots of bugs, and occasionally robots, and bigger robots, and a giant beast, and I don't know. You shoot stuff, lots of stuff. That, that's really the synopsis. Now, you know what, it's better off. I'm not going to go through menus and stuff like that too much. First of all, let's just go to equipment. Um, when you first start the game, what you have is Storm. Storm is basically the basic trooper. Uh, when you start the game, you won't actually see this screen, this top option on the screen. It won't be there until after you complete the game. Um, once you complete all the missions uh, on any difficulty, then you un unlock Pale Wing. And Pale Wing's a different thing. I'll show you that in a bit. So first of all, we'll start with Storm. Now, one of the things that a lot of people like to tout about Earth Defense Force 2017 and Earth Defense Force in general is that it has a lot of weapons. And you just go through this list at a, at a snapshot. It seems, oh, there's tons of weapons. No, not really. Right, assault rifle. Um, let's see here. Assault rifle. Burst. This is short assault rifle. Auto cannon. Um, uh, assault rifle. Burst assault rifle. Assault rifle. Uh, slow assault rifle. Somewhat slow assault rifle. V shot assault rifle. Assault rifle. Assault rifle. And then large assault rifle. You get the picture? Notice how I basically said nothing but assault rifle that entire time. And I was not kidding. Yes, it, I know it's categorized at the top here. But when you really go through all these weapons, it's basically the same weapon with better stats over and over and over again. Like some of these are different. Uh, like for example, wide shot, wide shot. These ones it has a basically does a cone sideways for example so yes that's interesting buffalo g3 burst that one does uh fires two shots really qu quickly one after the other um honestly all the sniper rifles practically do the same thing this is nova buster it's a beam you can only shoot it once so a stringer it bounces stuff like that plasma launcher limited shots overall like for example okay Assault Rifles, they're all basically the bloody same thing. Shotgun, they're almost the same thing, but um, slight differences in scatter. Sniper Rifle, I might as well call them all the same thing. Maybe it's, again, differences in power and stuff, but that's about it. Rocket Launchers, you get sta you have the standard Rocket Launchers, and there's Titania, Titania and Bloodfire. These are basically the same type. It's after delay, it f shoots a bunch. Um, Stingray... Stingray is the standard. Goliath. Goliath is just a really big one. Plasma, I noted, noted that earlier. That one's limited shots. Cascade is an interesting rocket launcher, I will say that. Uh, I might just have to use that. Volcano 3-Way Burst is also an interesting rocket launcher. It fires 3x4 shots per trigger shot, so that's interesting. Cascade is... I think it's one of the more iconic weapons, I think. It's, just, it's a rapid-fire rocket launcher. We're going to use that in a bit. First, we'll go over these. Missiles, in general, I think they're useless. Now, missiles, they're useless. Um, I'll get to Pale Wing in a sec, because the Pale Wing homing projectile isn't that bad. But missiles for the storm are useless, completely useless. Because if you hold down rapid-fire missiles, they will just fire a billion of them at the same time. All at the same target, even if the target dies within the first missile. It's terrible. These are terrible. This is Blast Radius. It seems decent. No, it's actually terrible as well. Grenades, all these MG, MG, MG. And basically, all these ones are hand thrown, um, impact or, del or uh, time delay. And then these are faster shot, impact or time delay. Basically, the ones are J or time delay, ones without the J or impact. This one. Now, this one's basically the same thing as the other rocket launcher. And all these special weapons. Special weapons aren't that interesting. Like this is uh this is basically an assault rifle, really. No, it's sort of, it's not really assault. It's more a shotgun assault rifle ish. Um this one's the assault rifle. The torch is only for vehicles. Vehicles are a bit clumsy. 
Flamethrower. Flamethrower is actually not that good. Hand bombs. They're bombs. And a whole bunch. Um, let's see here. Impulse. Yeah, mines, bomb, remote detonation bombs, mines. Uh, uh turrets. Firecrackers are just multi grenades. Uh, bound gun bounces off stuff. Killer drone. I haven't actually tried to use that. A couple of these I haven't tried to use. And then all these tools are basically... The tools are mostly for multiplayer. Because I believe all of these are... Most of these are healing. Uh, this one is blah blah blah. This is a shield. It lands on players. Again. This is... This resurrects allies. This shields allies. This boosts vehicles and everything else is a heal gun. It's actually kind of useless in single player. But these would be interesting for multiplayer which I have not tried. Uh, okay, so let's grab Volcano 3-Way Burst, because that looks fun. Oh, wait, I already have it. Oh, whatever. Okay, then let's put the Cascade on the other one. Yay. So, so I'm going to snipe a mission here. Um, there are 60 missions in total, as you can see. Would I say they're actually different? I don't know. Um, let's just go into this one first. Is this the one... I believe it's this one. I'm pick normal just because it's easier. And I keep dropping my mic. The load times are fairly long, but I don't think they're too bad. Alright, here we go. As you can see, rapid fire rocket launcher shreds all the things. Triple fire rocket launcher, lots of explosions. Ah, damn it. I don't want to blow myself up. Now, what you'll notice is that compared to, say, other Vita games, for example, the graphics in this are really bad. Like, I'm not getting to lie here. The graphical fidelity is terrible. However, the thing is, it's kind of necessary. And it's not obvious in this because I picked a tunnel segment just to show, lots of, show off lots of explosions. But in reality, this thing suffers from frame rate drops. Lots of frame rate drops. Like, it's less obvious because there are fewer objects on the screen here, but that you will lose frames repeatedly. And it's not really the fault of the system or anything. I don't, it's probably not the fault of the, um, the way this is optimized. It's, it's just simply the way it is, you have way too many, it, you have an insane number of units on the screen. That's just how EDF ro rolls, apparently. As many units as humanly possible on a single screen. And you blow them all up. This mission is somewhat difficult if you've never done it before. I've done it so many times just trying to farm it out. I picked this one because it's nice and short, but whatever. So yay. And I've also picked it because it it's short and it highlights an issue with e one of the issues with EDF. I'll just get through these guys. Well, first of all, you can tell that the AI isn't exactly intelligent. And again, it's like billions of bugs all over the place. Of course, it's not going to be intelligent. Oops. Yeah, the problem with explosives is that you can blow yourself up with them. As you can see, every single time I accidentally move too close to a corpse, and then the rocket just blows me up. And yay, the three-way launcher. Nice, lots of explosions. Cool for showing off. Let's see, am I going to run into that issue with this time? Yeah, it looks like I am. No, actually I won't. Okay. Hmm, maybe I'll run into it on the payload wing run. Whatever. What you'll notice is that at the start of it, you could tell that I was getting swarmed by a ton of ants. But as I go through, you can tell I'm just standing here. Just standing here. You can see If you can see the dot on the radar in the top right corner, you can see that they aren't getting any closer. Like, they, they should come out from that hole over there. I'm just standing here. They're not showing up. And I have to go off and hunt them down. Or is it that hole? Ah, oh, fuck. Second issue, yeah, this is why they get st they get stuck. You can tell how the it throws them on the radar as the same elevation, but I can't actually see them. Oh, where the hell are they? Oh, okay, I did run into the issue after all. As you can tell, when it gets to the last couple bugs on monsters on every mission, especially if they only use the small monsters, they think I'm a pain in the ass just to chase all these guys down. You have to look run around. It's particularly bad with Storm. Not, it's not too bad with Pale Wing, because Pale Wing's just really fast. But on Storm, you have to march your way through, and hey, there's finally this one guy who dies in one shot, but he got stuck. 
It's it's particularly acute in tunnels, but otherwise, yeah. It, it's annoying. It it's extra annoying on the very large stages, especially the ones with a lot of verticals, because then you have to go up a ramp, and then up another ramp, and then over a bridge, and then the, you accidentally blow up the bridge, so you have to go all the way around. That's bloody annoying. But yeah, this is a, basically a snapshot of what it's like and what the problems are. Now let's quickly head over to Pale Wing, and I'm going to show you what the other issue is. And it's best to show this with two missions, not just one. So let's switch it to Pale Wing. Uh, plasma Launcher... Rapier Thrust? Yeah. Rapier Thrust? I like Rapier Thrust for the playstyle, but I don't know, I think it's a bit boring to look at. Uh... Actually, no, we'll use Rapier. No, we'll use Rapier, it looks flashier. Okay, where are we here? There we go, multiplication. Normal. Alright, this one is the Pale Wing. Pale Wing is the is a special feature in EDF 2017 Portable. Because Pale Wing is actually from EDF 2, I believe, and subsequent ones as well. This didn't show up in the original EDF 2017. And you get to fool around with it in all the same missions. Um, Pale Wing is slightly awkward in tunnels, which is why I'm not showing it in a tunnel, but it's really fun out in the open. However, once this loads, you'll quickly see what the issue is. So, yay! Jetpack. The, the, there's a bar on the right side. That's the energy bar. You notice how I just ran out of energy? Exactly. As much as the Pale Wing is supposed... Ah, oh, crap, and I am out of energy now. And now you get to deal with a nice annoying... Hey, you're out of energy sound! But yeah, you notice that I ran out of energy absurdly quickly there. And that's... I guess it's a playstyle option with the... Pale Wing, where she just... She can has this boost jetpack that lets her fly around really fast. But she runs out of energy almost instantly. But it, it's really irritating because the, re the recharge time is extremely slow. Also, you notice I'm just picking up all this stuff on the ground. Uh, my Pale Wing file isn't quite as far along as my Storm file. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess in terms of difficulty, the recharge makes it really good. Because then it's a, it just, it's a balancing act of how often you fire your weapons, how often you boost and stuff. But I don't know, in terms of playstyle, it just, it's just really frustrating. Like, I don't know. It's really frustrating. Also, it's, I guess it's, I, I, it might be useful to note that the, the, your ability to recharge your boost does not improve with easier difficulties. It's just kind of there. And it's really annoying, because it's just... Look, I'm just... I want to be flying around with a booster. But I'm running around waiting for this damn thing to recharge. And you spend... I end up spending most of my time at the bottom 25% of the booster. I don't know. And if you end up spending all your time at the bottom 25%, then you end up having to deal with the... I don't know, maybe you can hear it in the background, but it's that... Hey, hey you're at the last 25% of your energy sound. It's just... Ugh. It's slightly irritating. And the Pale Wing playstyle is fun. I just wish that there was, like, some way to... to just hacks or something. I don't know. Goes up. Now I... Even though I technically can fire again, so, uh, I've run out of energy for that. Now I have to go up close. Use the Rapier. I prefer the Rapier Narrow just because the applied DPS is better, but... This is nicer on the screen, so yay. I'm gonna use this. Now let's just blow this thing up. Ah, crap. Out of energy again. Um, of note, by the way, is that weapons do not reload if you put them away on Storm. But with Pale Wing, they do reload if you put them away, which is nice. Just grab all this stuff real quick. Mind you, even though this bit is kind of boring, it is a part of the game. Because the only way in order to get more weapons and higher health is to run around and pick up those, all those pickups. Um, some of them are health packs, some of them are large health packs. The ones that look like Kevlar vests, those are extra health. You get plus one, uh, yes, plus one health every single time you pick one of them up. 
Yeah, I'm just saying. It gets a little bit grindy, and also the weapon pickups that you can get are randomized. They're randomized based on how lu damn lucky you get. They, they're partially based on the difficulty of the level itself, but... But, for the most part, if you, getting the weapon that you actually want, like for example, a better rapier, or like a rapier that does more damage because I haven't found one yet, yeah, you kind of have to get lucky, basically. And yes, you can get better weapons on higher difficulties, but after normal, like I tried doing hard for a couple of missions with Pale Wing. I don't know, it becomes really hard. Ah, crap, and I ran out of energy again. Awesome. Yeah, that's the danger with some of these weapons. They just drain so much energy, and then you're just stuck on the ground. Yes, it's punishing in the sense, and it's I think it's good for difficulty, but it's just really irritating if you just want to enjoy boosting around the battlefield. So yeah, that's basically a snapshot of what the... Combat's like. I'll just quickly. Oh man, I didn't get anything new. And pfft, yeah, that's the whole game in a nutshell. Really? Yeah, just two missions. That's the whole game. It really is the whole game. Multiplayer, I believe, is ad hoc only. If I'm not mistaken, multiplayer is ad hoc only. Uh, there is no online multiplayer, so you'll need friends. Oh wait, there is online. Ah oh, crap. Well, let's explore this together, then. Hmm. Interesting, so... Yep, it doesn't seem like there's anyone actually playing the multiplayer anymore. There's supposed to be an online component. I guess with this game being this old by now, no one's actually playing the online. It's also not super popular, but whatever. There's also local co-op. You need multiple Vitas for this. Uh, you can't do it on a single screen, unlike, say, the Xbox version where you could plug in two controllers. There's that. And, yeah, that's about it. Y there are bugs. You blow them up with different weapons. And then you get more weapons and more health. And then you blow up more bugs. That is basically the entire game in a nutshell. I mean, you'll see all these missions. Oh, cool, all these fancy pictures. And you realize it's just different types of enemy. All of these. Like some of them, like, I believe the... Like, for example, these. this mission, for example, it has giant monsters. Um, they're boring. They're really boring. You'd think, oh, giant monsters, so much fun. You know what, let's do that one for a sec. Dino Mech. On normal. And I'll show you just how boring these giant monsters are. Um, there are also giant mechs. Those are not too difficult, but annoying in large packs. Smaller mechs, annoying, but not too difficult. Lar no. Honestly, the entire game is... You could summarize all the difficulty as individuals are annoying. It's only difficult when they throw a ton of them at you. And then when you whittle it down, you basically just run backwards repeatedly. So it does have these little cutscenes. It doesn't have too many of them. Oh yeah, giant! I don't know, kaiju! Giant monster with armor! Looks cool, right? And hey, it has a flamethrower too! So cool, right? No, once I get into this fight, I'll show you how lame it is. Like, these things are pretty damn lame. In fact, most of the things basically revolve around firing in intervals and moving. And then firing in intervals and then moving. I think the only interesting opponents. The only interesting opponent, in my opinion, is the final boss. Like, even the uh, mobile fortress, it, it like it takes a lot of hits, but it, it's really not dangerous. It, it, I mean, it's, it's the only thing that has different phases and stuff. Oh, charge towards it. Like, hey, it's raising its arms. I mean, yeah, it does that move. Whoop-dee-doo. So I just spent this entire time running towards it. Yay! Blows fire! And now it's running really fast, so I have to fire off a faster, longer range weapon. And now I'm out of energy again. 
You have to wait for it. Oh, God damn, I hate this part. Yeah, this part's annoying because then you have to wait for the damn thing. Oh no! And that's, and that's firing flames around again. Yep, out of energy. Yep. Highly annoying out of energy sound! Behold, the highly vi highly visceral rapier. Yeah, it like unlike other enemies, this guy doesn't even twitch when you hit him. I suppose it's nice to emphasize how tough it is, but it's just it's just unsatisfying when you fire weapons. Well, well, he just kind of twitch when you hit him in the head. I guess, but like if you hit him in the leg for I don't know, maybe it's just the explosives or maybe it's just it's one animation. Oh look, the gigantic monster. Oh no, the gigantic monster. Whatever shall I do about it? Look, I just spent all that time shooting it. I'm shooting it in the leg, and now I'm out of energy, and now I'm waiting for it. Yeah, this is, like I said, it's a pretty boring fight. <sighs> Maybe just stop moving so I can hit him with something. Oh, there we go. He's down. Highly exciting! Come on. Despawn your damn corpse so I can grab my loot. Now that's more of a mild annoyance, but still. Yeah, overall, that's basically indicative of how fights go. If it's just one guy, it's really boring. Like, it's really boring. And, again, when you look at this mission list, all these are basically the same thing. Like, arrival, bugs. More bugs. More bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Oh, sorry. This is this is airborne targets. Then more bugs. Then more bugs. Then large targets. Then more large targets. Then bugs. Then more bugs. Then bugs. This one, I believe, is airborne targets. This is large targets, bugs, bugs. One single large target, that's the one we just did. Bugs, large targets, bugs. Like, I, it's like, oh, it has 60 missions with four difficulties. Yeah, but they're basically the same damn mission with different, mildly different mechanics. Like, this last mission is the only interesting one, in my opinion. Everything else is just bugs, 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 zerg of bugs. And quite frankly, 60 missions is a lie. It's a it's a straight-faced lie. In reality, this only has about five different missions tops. Like, in effect, it's only five different missions. Maybe ten if you double it for being underground, but that's about it. Like, the missions themselves aren't that interesting. Um, th again, the weapons themselves aren't that interesting. Admittedly, the Pale Wing selection is better than the Storm selection, because it's mildly different, but even then... Go to these range weapons, like it basically goes down boils down to plasma launchers and plasma grenades. Really? And this is what this entire section boils down to. And then like bigger explosion with more damage, smaller explosion with less damage, it's slightly lower energy cost, and this is a grenade where you have to toss it. Like the you can tell for example that these two the proto thunder sniper and the thunder sniper are basically the same weapon. LRSLs, all basically the same weapon with different stats. Ugh. Like, it, like it, when it look, you see it on the box, it says so many missions, so many weapons, so many enemies. Great, right? It's a slight ruse. It's really just more enemies that are maybe more difficult and then more weapons that are just upgrades to your existing ones. Now, would I recommend this game? That's the really tricky part. Because I'm not sure if I actually can recommend this game completely, yet at the same time, I cannot deny that I had a lot of fun with it. Because, in terms of recommendations, running around, trying to gun down all these things, all these bugs, it, it gets fun, it gets really repetitive, though. Like I said before, there are only about 10 unique missions in this. Um, I don't know. At the end of the day, 
if you like this aesthetic, then okay, go for it. Um, at this point, I believe the price tag is still 35 bucks. I could be wrong. Um, they might have done a price cut by now. I'll have to double check that. I'll I'll post it in the description if I get the price wrong. But for the price, I would say it's a gamble for you because the the amount of t enjoyment you'll get out of this is dependent on whether or not you really like this sort of thing. Like if you like. Like, you're basically a one-man army taking on an army. And I, I get that that's really good. But it's just that you really will be using similar weapons. After about mission 10, once you get all the different variety of weapons, you will basically be using the same weapons for the entire game. With better stats. Well, that's basically how it rolls. Missions are the same thing with tougher, marginally different bugs. Like, for example... Uh, like maybe the way they move or the or the damage they deal and stuff. <sighs> I don't know. Would I recommend this game? I'm gonna say worth playing if you if you like this video, then I think it's worth playing for you. At the very least, I believe it's worth playing. If you didn't like this video, I don't think anything is gonna convince you that this is a good game. Um, if you're someone who's really What's the right word? Stuck up about their graphics, don't t don't even get anywhere near this. The graphics are really, really, really weak. Um, and it's, I didn't show it in this video, but on, on the more cluttered levels, there you're, you will get frame drops repeatedly. And then if you fire explosive close to you, you'll get even more frame drops. Word of warning. Um, other than that, I don't know. TLDR, it's a risk. It's it's dumb fun, but it is fun. So if you, so I, at the end of the day, this is a risk. If you're willing to take the risk, if you have disposable income, go for it. I had fun with this, but I find it hard to recommend just because it's a little bit binary. My name is V Sin. Thanks for watching.